you, Oliver, from uh, other questions? Um, just a fun general question. Uh, are you um, um, talk about that? Uh, are uh, depends on the metric. Uh, what if uh, the metric is changed? For example, what about the this semi remaining manifold? And you know. Uh, Something you can you can do this for semi Riemannian manifolds. Um, on semi Riemannian, we'll find the right. If you look at this, this doesn't make any sense on a on a semi Riemannian manifold because you don't have distance. But you can write down the um, optimality conditions mm -hmm. for this. Um, and they do exist, and you can you can you can use them as a definition. Basically, the, the stationary conditions for this mm -hmm. they can be formulated on the semi-Riemannian manifold. Um, yeah, people. Yeah, not quite. It's, this would be interesting in, in in general relativity. In principle, you could try and, and solve metric fields, Lorentz metric fields, and with that. But it's not something that we've ever tried. This is phi i are the normal Lagrange spaces. Yeah, these are scalar this is normal, scalar okay. Lagrange spaces. And then, and then there's no, no not a way like to interpret this this minimization formulation with a projection somehow. <coughs> but but like a generalized one. What what happens? What happens actually? It's not in the talk. But what happens is if you take the um, it has the distance here, right? I said it's the distance in the manifold, but I didn't, it could be any distance basically, mm -hmm. any well-behaved distance. So what happens is if I have an embedding, right? And I have two points, bi and q, what I'm thinking about basically is the distance along the curve, right? The standard Riemannian distance. But I could take another one, right? I could take, for example, take, say, okay, the thing is embedded, and then I could use this distance, right? which is equivalent in a sense, but it's not the same. Mm -hmm. right? And as it turns out, with like a calculation like this, when you do that, this becomes a projection-based oh, really? calculation. So, so the projection is, is taking on non, the non-geodesic distance? Mm -hmm. yeah, the, project, it's, it's, the projection appears as a special case. Yes. It appears as a special case of this interpolation rule with this particular transition. It's not the same interpolation. Yeah. Um, well, it depends on, on the distance. The fun thing about this, this definition is that you don't, I'm speaking of manifolds and Riemannian stuff. You don't actually need all this. You don't need a manifold. You need a length, you need a metric space. Mm -hmm. um, you can define this without any smoothness, uh, without any smoothness assumption. I don't know what that would be good for, but you can do it. And there are a few works by by Jürgen Joost. I know he's a kind of thing in Leipzig. Yeah, yeah. one of the most like famous the MPI in Leipzig. Yeah. One of the most oh, famous yeah. analysis yeah. in Germany. He has looked at harmonic maps into metric spaces. I think he even wrote a book about it. So there is. This is something that people were interested in. I have a practical question. I mean, now you, you showed several interesting cases of forward models. So could one also try to use it for inferring, for instance, pressure fields, something which you cannot directly measure sometimes? So if I could somehow, so in, for instance, if I have a cell deformation coming from a certain stress field, and then use the, the method fitting it to the data and try to get back then what was actually the, the pressure field or other fields, which I maybe cannot measure. Well, that, that, that sort of inverse question, yes. usually there's a standard theory for that, and that requires that you're able to solve the forward problem. And then you could, of course, make an iterative yeah, thing by go, just looking back. for the field until yeah. the equation is... You go back and forth. Yeah. Okay. Okay, if there are no more questions,
Then I would say we thank Oliver again. Oh, you have one. Have you considered looking at uh, biomolecules and protein folding, for example, as methodology? No, never. Seems like an interesting direction of flow there. Um, also, with regards to what, what AlphaFold 2 was doing recently, seems like this would be a way more analytical way to address it, maybe. Maybe there is a use in there. Yeah, so a, a generalization of the of the rod in some sense we had in the beginning, but just as a as a molecule which then falls back to itself, and then you have to also have all the orientations, fields, and also sheets, like yeah. the sheets and uh, protein folding. It's kind of predictions. If the um... Yeah, the, the models, these broad models, um, as a way to, uh, there's, there's a standard way to model all sorts of one dimensional things. And actually, the person who got me into the whole field is a guy called John Maddox from, from Lausanne. Uh, he used them for DNA strands. He didn't do much numerics with it, but just as a, as a model. Um, and there are extensions of the model called by rods where you, you know, have this double double helix structure built in there. So they have two rotations, two rotation fields. Seems like a great toolbox for protein folding to me. Yeah. Either this or modern art. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, but then we thank Oliver again, I would say.